Hey guys, Rocky again. Welcome to, oh, I suppose, a review, really. So, I've been messing about with something I alluded to in a previous video. This is called the tape cart. So, before I talk about that, let's have a little chat. Commodore 64s. Programs can be loaded on one of three ways. One, cartridge. So, slots in the back. Game was immediately brilliant, yay! Um, disadvantages: not that many games are released on cartridge. They are tending to get more expensive now. Fair enough. Okay, method two. Common in more common in North America than in the there's in the UK. Five and a quarter inch floppy drives. Generally, these would go into fifteen forty one floppy drives. Again, fifteen forty one floppy drives were common in America, less so in the UK. So, advantages, games load slightly quicker than tape, however, it's not a fast drive, they are really big, like some of them, the length of a Commodore 64C, they are really heavy because they have internal power supplies, these discs are getting more expensive, I know, here in the UK I'm talking, like in America, I know these are really still quite common, um, slow load times etc etc final way original way tape cassette tape advantage of these are cheap real cheap this is grumpy simulator by um codemasters program by adrian shepherd johnny humphreys actually so by Boots the Chemist, so if you're that old you'll know what that means. So these are cheap, thousands and thousands and thousands of games on tape. There's advantages, they are really slow to load. Really slow. It's the slowest method by far. But So yeah, the tapes are cheap, majority of games are available on them, especially in the UK, eBay is flooded with them. They're still, boxes are still found in lofts every year. However, they're slow. It's a slow method to load games, and for modern retro gaming, that ain't gonna cut it. People are not willing to wait. And then, fail loads. The later games have multi loads, so you play a, it loads in a level, you play it, you, it, you fail it. Sometimes you have to go back and reload the level, other times it'll load the next level, and then. So, modern solutions. What do we have? Up till pretty recently, the really only way to load stuff without those three methods I mentioned was what was called a SD to IEC adapter. So that is a little device, it was about, actually about that size, some of them. Em long story short, it emulated the 1541 floppy drive. So there were two leads off the back of this, one that went into the floppy connector, one went into the tape connector to take power. That's what the power to form. So you put you put your files on an SD card, shove it in, load it. However, it emulated the fifteen forty one, so it wasn't the fastest way, and they weren't, in my opinion, they weren't really the cheapest. I mean, I'm looking at an eBay right now. Um, sold ones here. So SD like in nice little cases, forty seven ninety nine free postage, forty six ninety nine free postage, forty seven. There was a slightly different version uh, that I've seen. There was kit version sold. So anywhere between 20... I've seen them as cheap as 28 and as dear as 60. And there are... People always debate about which one's the best, which one's the worst. I mean, I didn't particularly like them and I held off buying them. I wanted a more elegant solution like there is in the Spectrum. Where it just plugs in. Bingo. Came across this. It's called Tape Cart, um, also called Tape Tweeno. It's based on Arduino technology, or sorry, Tap Tweeno. So this doesn't emulate the floppy drive. This emulates the cassette player. So it takes standard SD cards, which I like because fiddling about with micro SD cards, I which I lose all the damn time. So I think this is like the smallest, it, and these are cheap. This is 20 quid, 20 pounds. So, and I bought 
the cheapest one I could find, which is 16 gig, and it was like £3 delivered from Amazon the next day. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the video here, I'm going to flip to another camera, I'm going to look at the Commodore 64, and we're going to fire it up. See you in a few. Hey guys, so, sorry about the angle, but this is the best I can film it right now. So, Commodore 64, all set up. The device is put in the cassette port, so what would take place of the cassette player. Just shift run stop, like you normally would. No need to wait for the push play on tape. And then, a few moments, browser.prg. This takes a couple of moments from here. And there you have it. So, let's just example games E. Uh, find something I quite like. Exile. Exile.prg. It's the cross the crack version. Uh, unlimited firepower. No, no. And there we go. Exiles loaded. Simple as that. Machine off, machine on, just to reboot. So it will. Shift on stop. It will only load .prg programs. I tried loading a few different types on, and nothing, none of them work. Uh, so no, d no, um, the other file types. So I'll look. Oh, memory escapes me right now. Uh, D64s don't work. So I don't. So I put a few things on it myself. Uh, so these are all .prg files. It doesn't play cartridge files either, which is a bit annoying. This menu can be controlled by both joystick and or keyboard. So CRT cartridge programs don't work either. Neither do D64 programs, which is fair enough. So just at the moment it plays PRGs. When I bought it, the guy did say it was still in early development. So I'm just loading some Zara, which is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up. I think it came free on a Commodore format tape way back when. So as you can see, that's loud. There you see, simple as that, and the game just plays normal. Okay, back to me. On the back, so. There you go, nice and tape cut in action. It's really simple. You plug one thing in, it's small, it's neat, it's efficient. Yes, it only loads .prg right now. Um, when I bought it, I got um, an eBay message I bought an email from the seller saying, okay, here's a link to the file system. So you throw it in an SD card. Pretty straightforward as long as you keep browser .prg in the main directory and then you just put all your games in, like you saw. The game just load. Yes, it only does PRG just right now, so something like Rendezvous Rama, which is a disc only game, can't play. But this is the kind of thing I was looking for for my 64, really. Small, neat, efficient, cheap. Throw the games on, put it in, shift run stop, load them up, play. So I'm really happy with this. I think for the price, this is absolutely outstanding. I really do. I mean, yeah, it looks home homemadey, which is fine. You know, it's not as nice as my fancy cased one for the Spectrum that the name eludes me that I've got. That was like sixty odd quid or seventy quid, I think I paid. But this is what I wanted for my sixty four was just something like this, just something quick, and, quick and dirty. And there's no multiple cable thing at the back. It barely sticks out at all. You can basically have the entire library on this. Play them all. Yeah, I really, I really recommend this. So if you've got Commodore 64 and you want to play games and you don't want to spend an absolute fortune buying like, you know, like, what, what, what does Gianna Sisters go for these days? Like X hundred pounds for a game that 
you know, files nothing. So there you go. Take that. Get one on eBay. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.